View Masters. It's the podcast that we do. View Masters. Talk about movies that we view. View Masters. My friend Eric and me, Joe. View Masters. Hey, let's start the show. Hello. Welcome to the View Masters, episode 212 The Lighthouse. My name is Joe. My name is Eric. Hello, Eric. Hello, Joe. How are things? Things are okay. Yeah? Yeah. All right. How, how are things with you? They're fine. Good to hear. <laughs> no significant changes. <laughs> uh, well, there's uh, there's one big change happening locally here. Oh, yeah? What's that? Uh, our... Uh, your former, my part-time uh, comic shop here in Dayton is uh, scheduled to reopen next week. Oh, that's exciting. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I, uh, hmm? I, I know they've been doing... Have they still been doing uh, curbside pickup? A little bit, yeah. Okay. I, I know that they've been focusing on like eBay and stuff, too. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they're they're opening to the public as of next week, which wow. uh, yeah, uh, you know, I, uh, a thing I enjoy doing is uh, going there and hanging out and uh, you know seeing our, our friends and, and browsing through uh, back issues and stuff. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, I don't think I'll be doing that for a while, even though they're open again. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I it it seems too soon. Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> like way too soon. Yeah. <laughs> but you know that's the Ohio way. Just diving right in. It's true. Going right for it. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, the combination of sports cards fan and uh, magic fans uh, s- seems like they're just a, a cautious, healthy group of people. Absolutely. Who will yeah. You totally know, magic follow all precautions magic players never never congregate in large groups for any reason so nope (laughs) oh boy yeah my 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 shop uh my local shop is opening just for curbside pickup uh i believe at the beginning of next week so that's um, that's something taking things a lot slower here in washington which is good that is that is very good very smart Although, uh, there are no comics, so what, what are they, uh, you know, <laughs> selling on the curbside? Uh, uh drugs? I don't know. All right. <laughs> no, the, the, there's, there's Funkos and, and toys and <laughs> mostly Funkos. <laughs> That's right. You do live in the home of uh, Funko, don't you? We do. Yeah. The, the shop is about 10 minutes away from the Funko headquarters. That's pretty awesome. It is pretty cool. Yeah. I don't hate it. <laughs> it it's also just means that our apartment has been overrun by Funko Pops. Yeah. Seems like one of you should have put a stop to that. Yeah, Jenny's done a pretty good job of <laughs> curtailing that. I, I, I have not. I've tried. <laughs> well, you, you gotta have something right they, they keep they keep making ones i want well i don't that know it's also their fault too i don't know what to tell you yeah. <laughs> that is their fault yeah. damn have, them uh... for making a product i'm in the market for <laughs> <laughs> i have uh three total funko pops oh which ones do you have uh i have uh blue beetle and booster gold of course and I've got the uh, Batman Beyond that came with the Batman Beyond Blu-ray set. Nice. Yeah. That's the, the shiny chrome Batman Beyond, right? He is very shiny. Nice. <laughs> it never occurred to me that that costume would be shiny. Yeah. Well, th- I mean, that's the that's the shiny variant. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I guess technically my Blue Beetle and Booster Gold are also shiny. Okay. Uh, but... It's, uh, but they did make a non-shiny variant, which uh, 
don't think I haven't thought about buying that set as well, just so that I could have an unshiny blue beetle. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I have boost. I have booster and beetle as well, and I think I have the unshiny version. Ah. Uh, Want to trade uh, beetles? <laughs> trade beetles. <laughs> <laughs> It seems like then I would have the wrong set. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's from the, the crazy JLI adventure where they ch- traded shiny levels. <laughs> I remember that. That was Justice League America number 37. Yep. Back when uh, Keith Giffen still gave a damn. That's right. <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't think he ever stopped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy uh, speaking of grumpy people <laughs> that's an excellent segue thank you because wow <laughs> oh, oh the, the lighthouse, lighthouse. <laughs> you go uh, <laughs> all right so uh, i would just like to start off with first of all uh, don't you like my cooking? <laughs> I never have. Okay. Oh, it's that's always been terrible. <laughs> and, I hate uh, your lobster in particular. Uh, I work so hard. <laughs> uh, second though, um, you know, Kind of one of my dream jobs would probably be to be a lighthouse keeper. Yeah. And, uh, boy, this movie does not make it look glamorous. <laughs> it really doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> At least not lighthouse keeping in the uh, late 1800s. I guess, yeah, that, that probably plays a part. Yeah, because they, uh, they don't have phones or anything. No, no. But, uh, boy, yeah, that's... Uh, Took some wind out of my sails. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope that your boat didn't crash on the rocks. Then I don't know where I'm going with that. <laughs> boat, lighthouse, whatever. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All the elements were there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, this, uh, this movie was upsetting. <laughs> There's a lot of upsetting stuff in this movie. Uh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thought so. All right, all right. Or may- uh, maybe not upsetting, maybe unsettling. I can there, definitely there's... see some unsettling things. I was, I was very unsettled. Uh, yeah, somewhat uncomfortable as well. Yeah. There's a, a lot of uh, vigorous, angry masturbation in this movie. <laughs> or more than I expected, anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess unexpected is, is probably a good way. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there's only two scenes. <laughs> <laughs> That's too, too many, sir. <laughs> Might agree with you on that. <laughs> it's definitely more than you expect when you sit down to watch a movie. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. you know, typically, depending yeah. on what type of movie you're sitting down to watch. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> so, I, I would just like to start off uh, with, with uh, the the episode, the review, which, uh, th- this movie is, is labeled as a horror movie. Um, I, I don't think I would call this a horror movie. Yeah, I mean, there are, there are, like I said, unsettling elements. Right. Um, like it's, it's probably like a psychological horror movie. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. More so than, than standard horror. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for some reason I thought this was a dark comedy when I sat down to watch it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it is not that. Ooh. So is, that, is that was, a... <laughs> that, that took some getting used to. <laughs> is, uh, was, was, uh. Was that a preconception that you had going into it, or was it just the fact that Willem Dafoe's first major scene is him farting? <laughs> a little of both. 
<laughs> I know. I, I feel like I had heard somewhere that it was a dark comedy, and I don't know where I heard that or if I just made that up. Huh. Uh, but then, yeah, Willem Dafoe, <laughs> the extended farting sequence. <laughs> the Snyder Cut. <laughs> Release it. <laughs> now with 100% more Dafoe farts. <laughs> That's just his character from Aquaman. <laughs> I forgot Cause, he was in Aquaman. Because he was in Aquaman for some reason. <laughs> right. Is he, uh, who is he in Aquaman? Is he Aquaman's father or something? No, uh, he's Aquaman's mentor. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. He's got a weird haircut and he wears tights. It's unsettling. <laughs> I don't know that I need to see Willem Dafoe wearing tights. It's not a pretty sight. I, I know the, the Green Goblin costume that he wore in Spider-Man gets a lot of flack for being a Power Ranger suit, but it's probably preferable to the alternative. Uh, there's that. He was also 20 years younger at the time. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very fair point. Uh, anyway, don't go see Aquaman. No. <laughs> I thought about picking it for the show because I haven't seen it, but then I remembered that you had seen it, so I decided against it. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty. Yeah. It's got a lot of nice visuals. All right. My, my best review for it is that uh, it is uh, it is like the Flash Gordon movie if you took out all the humor and camp out of it. Oh, that's disappointing. <laughs> yeah. All right, never mind. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Your mileage may vary. Yeah, but I was, but I is. was, I was iffy on bro Aquaman anyway. So yeah, it's just, uh, boy, it's long and boring, <laughs> <laughs> and it still winds up being like the second or third best DC movie. That's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, pretty bad DC. <laughs> Uh, anyway. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, so, uh, it's, uh, Green Goblin versus the Batman in this yes. movie. <laughs> the showdown I always wanted to see. Uh, so, I, uh, after watching this movie, I st- still don't know if Robert Pattinson is a good actor or not. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> this is, so I think this is the second thing that I've seen him in. Uh, the first the, being the entire Twilight Saga. <laughs> yeah, that's all, because that's all one movie. Right. Really, if you think about it. <laughs> no, the the first is as, as Cedric Diggory in uh, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Alrighty. Uh, so yeah, he he has a, a I guess you know a mid sized role in that movie, um, and he's fine in it. You know, I, I don't feel like you really get an idea of whether anyone is a quote unquote good actor from a Harry Potter movie. Um, so yeah, this I guess is the first the first real like meaty role that I've seen him in, uh-huh. um, and you know I thought he was good, um, but. You're right, you know, at, at, at the end of the day, too, I don't, I don't know, maybe that's just the way that the movie is made, and the way that he's shot, and his facial hair, right. and all of that working in his favor. Um, but I mean, this is definitely a bizarre movie. This movie is fucking weird. <laughs> I'm just gonna like let's not beat around the bush. Like, no, yeah, it's <laughs> like Jenny walked in at one point and was like, "What the hell are you watching?" <laughs> uh, so I've only I've seen two other Robert Pattinson movies. Okay, that I did not care for at all. Okay, uh, but also like as I watched them, you know, just like don't believe it was him and that was the issue yeah uh i watched uh i can't remember the name of it it's a david cronenberg movie cosmopolis that's it yep with uh robert pattinson in the back of a cgi car for an entire movie is that the whole movie i believe so yes oh my god um and it's it's bad 
but again, I don't know if, if that's because of him or just the entire situation of the movie. Right. Because <laughs> cause that's not a great concept to put anyone in, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It could be interesting. Maybe, yeah. Maybe not for a two-hour movie, but... Yeah. Uh, then the other one I watched was uh, Good Time. Uh, I've never heard of that one. <clears throat> it's uh, like he's a criminal whose brother gets arrested, and he basically spends the entire movie trying to uh, get his brother out of jail. Okay. Um, and, and again, I, I do not know if that was, you know the fault of him or just the movie itself. Right. And so this movie, which I will go ahead and say I liked. Yeah, I think I did too. (laughs) Like, I, I like, I kind of want to watch it again. Yeah. But I also kind of never want to watch it ever again. Sure. Uh, I actually, I did watch it twice. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, sort of. Uh, Did you fall so, asleep? No, no. Um, so, so, you know, well, a glimpse behind the curtain. Uh, we record these on Thursday evenings. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also have a three hour uh, time difference between us. So usually I come home from work and I watch the movie and that usually coincides with you being ready to be able to do the show. Right. And Usually, I wind up falling asleep in the middle of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> and usually, uh, my neighbors are out doing yard work because it's four in the afternoon. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Here, yeah. Right. Uh, so, w- when I was thinking about this movie, I was like, well, I mean, it's supposed to, be, I mean, I thought it was a horror movie. So it's like maybe not watching it during the day where, you know, my neighbors are out mowing <laughs> would probably be a better idea. So I watched it last night, you know, in the dark, you know, yeah. while it was quiet for the most part. Because uh, I also discovered that uh, across the street from me, uh, apparently they plow the field at midnight occasionally. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So that was interesting. Uh, but, you know, I watched it at night last night. And then when I got home today, uh, I just turned it on and I just sort of half watched it while I did a bunch of other stuff. Okay. So just kind of to give myself a refresher a little bit, but uh, I didn't pay too much attention the second time. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, uh, like, I, I definitely don't think it's a bad movie at all. It is just, so off kilter. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. That's a that's a great way to describe it. <laughs> Just like the the way that that Pattinson and and Defoe Just like their line deliveries is weird. Yeah. Are weird? Uh, I don't know. Are yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Professional editor, folks. <laughs> Um, yeah, that, well, I mean, I mean, part of it is the dialogue itself, like, right. That had to be difficult to do. Yeah. Like the, the stuff that Willem Dafoe has to say (laughs) is kind of bananas at some points, (laughs) but I bet it was also a lot of fun. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I definitely feel like. Like, it's definitely a Willem Dafoe role, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah he's, like, he's, he's sort of playing this, like, he almost seems like a crusty old pirate. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's a, he's a former sea captain. Maybe. In, in the 1800s, possibly, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, he... he he looks like the guy who would be a lighthouse keeper in, you know, the 18 whatevers. Yeah, he, he looks vaguely like the uh, the boat captain from The Simpsons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Vaguely. <laughs> With possible one leg? Right. <laughs> it 
Who knows? Yeah, no one knows, because <laughs> everyone in this movie is unreliable. Yeah. Th- also, that is... there's only two people. <laughs> right. <laughs> and a mermaid, maybe. Maybe, uh, yeah. <laughs> Though, I don't know, I feel like I can't trust that mermaid. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't trust it. Nerd gaping uh... maw. <laughs> That's not that's not a not an innuendo. Okay. She's, she's just scary. But it is also sort of an innuendo. Yeah, no, cuz cuz the, the thing that you might be innuendoing is definitely present in the movie. Yeah. Uh, again, did not expect to see that in a movie. <laughs> Maybe an Aquaman, but not in this one. Oh, if it had been an Aquaman, then I might have enjoyed that movie slightly more. <laughs> I am I am imagining now that this movie takes place in the DC cinematic universe. <laughs> and that cuz isn't isn't that Aquaman's origin is that like a lighthouse keeper falls in love with the mermaid or whatever and then they have Aquaman? Is that it? Yeah, basically. Yeah. So so yeah, I mean, you know, Willem Dafoe might be Aquaman's dad in this movie, who knows? It's, it's possible. <laughs> And, and there is a lighthouse in the, the Aquaman movie. So. All right. We'll just, you know, get the yarn up on the wall. Uh, I mean, now I do really want to see Robert Eggers write and direct the Aquaman sequel. <laughs> that would be excellent. He'll probably make up his own Atlantean language <laughs> and film it entirely in that. Right. I hope it's subtitled at least. Uh, it'd be nice. I did. <laughs> I did have to watch this movie with subtitles for sure. Yeah, I, I get that. I wish that I had. <laughs> yeah. I, uh... So uh, the writer director of this movie, Robert Eggers, also uh, wrote and directed a movie called The Witch. Which uh, is written in, like, pre-colonial English dialect. Right. And it is pretty much like watching a foreign film. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a barrier to entry. Yeah. But Uh, at least I know when I watched The Witch, uh, I got used to it after a while. Oh yeah, you know, I mean, you, it, I mean, for one thing, like, there's not a ton of dialogue in that movie anyway, right? Uh, but yeah, I mean, you, you do get used to it, uh, and and I did get used to you know the dialogue in in this movie as well. But he he definitely seems to have a thing for uh, crazy versions of English. <laughs> <laughs> His next movie will be entirely in Pig Latin. <laughs> And it'll be the story of Julius Caesar. <laughs> uh, that's a scoop, folks. Write that down. Put, put that on the internet. You heard it here first. Uh, I have no insider information. No, yeah, I, did, I didn't think so. <laughs> that's hurtful. Uh, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so yeah. So everything about this movie is a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Again, really good way to to describe it. <laughs> so it's it's filmed in black and white. Uh, it is look. Like, a square ratio, pretty much. Yeah, I think I read it was like 1.17 to 1. So yeah, it, it looks like a movie from the 40s, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, all the dialogue is uh, basically maritime speak from the mid-19th century. Uh, from, you know, coastal New England. Right. Uh, I read that I mean, I think even there's a credit, like, (laughs) in the credits, like, about where the inspiration for the dialogue came from. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. 
Man, it was from like uh, a writer of like you know maritime history and like journals from actual lighthouse keepers from the uh, 19th century. That's really uh, cool. Yeah. So so it is allegedly pretty authentic. <laughs> Based on a true story. Uh, the, apparently, there is a little bit that is based on a true story. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, God. Uh, hang on. Uh, there is uh, uh, a, an English lighthouse, I believe, where two men named Thomas were the lighthouse keepers, and one of them died. And uh, the other one uh, thought that he would get blamed for his death. And so he basically just uh, tried to cover it up as best he could. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, then there is an actual movie adaptation of it called The Lighthouse. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> wow. Uh, That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, apparently, this was also originally supposed to be a an adaptation of an unpublished Edgar Allan Poe story called The Lighthouse as well. Yeah, I saw that. That wasn't uh, Robert Eggers' brother was working on that. Yep. And then he sort of stalled out on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, he said eventually that, uh, you know. Yeah, it is basically uh, they just ignored the Poe story entirely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I read it. Bears very little resemblance, <laughs> other than there's probably a lighthouse in the Poe story. I would guess. I'm guessing maybe a mermaid. <laughs> maybe <laughs> there are just ominous like birds. <laughs> there are <laughs> ominous birds in this movie, like there are in some Poe stories. And that is true. <laughs> and a. Uh, I'm guessing upsetting to you. Ten minute scene of a bird getting beaten. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was real upsetting. <laughs> I know you're a bird loving household. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm I'm glad Jenny wasn't in the room for that scene. <laughs> she she loves gulls. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, uh, Robert Pattinson sure doesn't. <laughs> She was she was in the room for the very last scene of the movie, which is also gull centric. Oh yeah, like I mean, I guess that's uh, retribution there. Uh, yeah, for yeah the earlier scene, definitely. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was uh, like I sort of figured it was coming. Yeah, at that yeah. point, the 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 gull murder scene, not the last scene. I had no idea the last scene was coming ever. Uh, <laughs> Who could have thought? <laughs> <laughs> if if anyone watches this movie and says to themselves, "Well, I know where this is going," <laughs> <laughs> you do not. <laughs> But yeah, so I, I I sort of knew that that was coming, but it was still really shocking. Yeah, to yeah, see him I mean, just grab that bird and and just swing it around, <laughs> just really bad. Really, yeah. I did not care for that at all. Uh, I didn't think you would. <laughs> uh, the, the, yeah, this this movie uh, has has uh, some some upsetting shocks. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I guess uh, a quick overview of the movie, I guess. Sure. Uh, the, the, the very basic plot of it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the the plot is relatively straightforward. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, all the insane character stuff that happens. Yeah. Uh, so, two men, uh, Willem Dafoe and uh, Robert Pattinson. Uh, are in, in charge of a lighthouse for four weeks. Uh, uh, Willem Dafoe is the, the sort of head light, lighthouse keeper. Um, Robert Pattinson is new to the job. 
and uh, they have to live together and work together for four weeks, and then uh, and then things go horribly awry. Yeah, basically, <laughs> almost from the get go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, I, I would say things go off the rail. Uh, you know, when Willem Dafoe gets naked in front of the light, right? <laughs> Which is again very early on. Uh-huh. And then happens repeatedly throughout the movie. Yep. Yep. <laughs> he is sexually attracted to a light. He loves that light. God, does he love that light. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I it's, it's sort of the story of... I guess they both go insane... I would say but yes. I, I feel like like uh, Willem Dafoe's character was already sort of on his way <laughs> beforehand. I would say neither of them are stable. Definitely not. <laughs> uh, and you can, you know, write off uh, Dafoe's character as, uh, you know, eccentric <laughs> at the beginning. <laughs> That's true. You know, just, uh, he's a guy who, you know, pretty much works, uh, you know, to, to be by himself in a lighthouse, uh, you know, and, and as, uh, as we are all experiencing isolation and quarantine, we, we know that you can get a little batty. <laughs> yeah. This, yeah, I was surprised at how, uh, how relevant this movie felt. <laughs> we need to stop picking relevant movies. <laughs> 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 I think I got us covered for next week, but who knows? Oh, all right. <laughs> who knows? Contagion? <laughs> Outbreak. Oh, all right. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. So 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 most of the movie is told, I would say from uh Robert Pattinson's character's point of view. Um, yes. that's, that's why it's a little, a little easier for me anyway to say, oh, well for sure, like this is about him going crazy. Right. But, but yeah, Defoe's character also, I, I feel like he goes from, from nutty to nuts, I guess. <laughs> yeah. If no, that makes he, sense. He definitely, uh, you know, has his own, uh, uh, pre- peculiar outbursts. Right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, so it's, 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 yeah, don't, like I said, I do not classify this as a horror movie. Uh, there are definitely unsettling elements, but it is mostly a drama about two men losing their fucking minds. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Uh, so, so essentially, like, if any part of the narrative can be trusted. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, they're, they're supposed to be there for four weeks. Then a storm hits, which prevents them from leaving when they're supposed to. And then after that, <laughs> uh, nothing we can be sure of is, is, uh, happening. Right. <clears throat> uh, Excuse me. I, I feel like it's also a movie about the perils of alcoholism. It, the, that is also true because <laughs> things really start to go bad once uh, once uh, Robert Pattinson's character starts drinking yeah yeah because uh, he does start off the movie uh, not wanting to drink at all uh, but then you know halfway through he, uh, he he does start to imbibe and then yeah things begin to go more off the rails from there <laughs> yeah yeah but also, it's the only time that the two characters really ever get along. That's true. <laughs> it's when they're both just hammered. Yep. And and we almost get a nice little love scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a, a turn that I was surprised by, but also felt like it made total sense. <laughs> I mean, two men out in the middle of nowhere with no one else. You know, what else is going to happen? I think that's the plot of Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> is it? I've never seen it. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, they're All like right. they're like cattle cattle hands or shepherds or something, and it's just the two two of them out in the 
the beautiful wilderness and they fall in love. All right. Well, good for them. It's a pretty, it's pretty, pretty good movie. Yeah, do do they also immediately get into a fist fight after uh, almost kissing? Uh, not that I remember. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is I not. Say, yeah. This is not that kind of love story. <laughs> no, no, it is not. Uh, it is definitely the love story of uh, two men and a light. Right. <laughs> it's a love triangle, really. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, I did appreciate uh, that, uh, you know, before or right after the almost kiss uh, and they start fighting each other, it is old timey fisticuffs. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I always enjoy seeing that in anything. I, I like that as well. <laughs> they are gentlemen boxers. Yes. Of uh, indeterminate origin. Right. <laughs> Which is also partially why I still don't know if Robert Pattinson is a good actor or not. Because yeah. I felt like his whatever accent he was using uh, slipped on occasion. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, because yeah. sometimes it's a really thick, almost like Kennedy-esque New England accent. Yeah. And then sometimes it's not. Yeah. <clears throat> like, uh, at one point I was like, is he Irish or Australian? <laughs> I, I did not have that problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe I will have to watch it again just to <laughs> to keep track of all the accent work. Uh, it did uh, make me appreciate Stephen King a little bit, actually. Okay. Uh, which, you know, I mean, I appreciate Stephen King in general. Sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've, I've read a ton of his books and all of his characters have these, these weird main accents, but I don't think I've ever heard a main accent before. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, Willem Dafoe's character says a lot of things that uh, I read in Stephen King dialogue. Okay. Uh, Interesting. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so so I, I now sort of almost have a gauge of how people would say things <laughs> in a I Stephen King story. I never even considered a main accent <laughs> as a thing. Yeah, me, me neither. But but they at least in his stories they they have weird uh, sayings. Okay, I, I guess it's probably like a, you know like a Philadelphia accent. Okay, you know yeah that it, makes sense. It, I mean those people definitely have an accent, but it's hard to put a finger on it until right. you like see specific hear specific uh, things said. You know yeah yeah. Uh. <clears throat> so yeah. Yeah. This, movie, this movie was weird, but I enjoyed it. I did as well. Um, <clears throat> I definitely think The Witch is better. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'd agree with you there. Yeah, but uh, I mean, it, it was good. It's, it's just, just uh, whew, it is, uh, it puts you off. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Like, like I, I definitely feel like you really need to be in the mood to watch this movie to fully enjoy it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and yeah, because I feel like if I don't watch this at any other time, you know, I don't know that I would have been able to. Yeah. Yeah, I watched it uh, yesterday afternoon. Uh, so it was light out when I watched it, which I feel like <laughs> was a was a good, good choice. Right. Um, at least for me. Okay. Um, and I did, I did, uh, I took a little nap in the middle, <laughs> as is, <laughs> as is my tradition, apparently. You and me both. I yeah. don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I, I feel like I had to psych myself up for it because I had heard that it was weird. Right. Uh, and, but uh, apparently I also heard it was a comedy. So. But I also heard it was a dark comedy, so who knows? <laughs> <laughs> oh, am I an unreliable narrator? Can I not be trusted? <laughs> I mean, I've never trusted you. <laughs> Did I kill a man and assume his identity? I don't know. <laughs> it, I mean, I wouldn't put it past you. I mean, you know, 
capable of anything. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen Jeremy Anderson in years. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a history of violence against him. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, the, the, lighthouse. the lighthouse. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, definitely makes me wonder how the Batman's gonna be for sure. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's not a. <laughs> it's not related. I was gonna say that's not a Robert Eggers movie, is it? No, no, it's not. <laughs> okay, but uh, Robert Pattinson, you know, again just unsure <laughs> yeah yeah like i need i need more evidence at least at least you know he is taking the uh the fame and clout that he got from those twilight movies and he's doing something interesting with it and i that appreciate is, that that is very true like he and uh, Kristen stewart both it seems like are 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 not just resting and toasting on that yeah uh, although with Kristen Stewart, uh, like, I don't think I've ever seen a movie with her in it. Okay. Uh, but, uh, she just does not absolutely look like a good actress. At yeah. All. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've seen, uh, she was in Panic Room. Uh, okay. Which I enjoyed. She was also very young in that. That was pre, pre Twilight okay. movies. Yeah, because I, I I saw that movie for sure. I yeah, don't remember her in it. I think she's Jodie Foster's daughter in that movie. Makes sense. Um, yeah, I feel like there are other things that I've heard are good that mm-hmm. I have not seen. Um, so, so you didn't rush out to see the Charlie's Angels movie that she's in? I didn't. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> I would watch that though. It looks like stupid fun. Uh, probably would watch it for for cheap yeah free yeah i mean free probably yeah definitely free (laughs) i figure when that hits hbo i'll i'll watch that on a sunday afternoon yeah i mean i like elizabeth banks yeah i do too i want to support her i just don't want to see a fourth charlie's angel movie when i never enjoyed any of the others was there a third uh Oh, I guess there's, I guess that is the third. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> I was like, is there a lost Charlie's Angels movie that I've never I, seen? I, I guess what I'm saying is that there's too many Charlie's Angels movies. Yeah, that's No that's matter fair. the number. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've only seen the first one. I, I did see the first one, yeah. And, it's I fine. Mean, yeah. It, I mean, I like Crispin Glover in it. Yeah, I like Crispin Glover and Sam Rockwell's in that one too, right? Oh yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah. He dances. He's, he's enjoyable and everything. Yeah. Except for that movie we watched <laughs> even, last week. Even Blue Iguana. <laughs> <laughs> he is enjoyable and everything but that one movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, for next week, I pick Blue Iguana again. No! <laughs> I quit. <laughs> <laughs> is that all it took? Was was this your plan all along? <laughs> what a weird plan! <laughs> I mean, we sat through four seasons of Farscape to get to this place. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it was it was a long con, <laughs> like just the longest con. I mean, you moved out of state. We didn't do it for three years. <laughs> I know, I thought I was free. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we don't have to watch Blue Iguana again. Uh, all right, I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, uh, what are we going to watch, though? Uh, well, I had a, a couple of things in mind. Uh, one of them I don't know that you'd be excited about. Uh, so I'll go with the other one first, and if you've seen it already, we can we can do the other one. Okay. Uh, so so the movie that I am picking uh, is uh, called The Death of Stalin. Okay. It's uh, it's on Netflix. It's from uh, Armando Iannucci, the creator of Veep. Okay. And, and, uh, I, uh, and what's the British show? In uh, the Loop, or not in the Loop? That's the movie. That's the um, movie. 
Uh, the thick of it. That's it. Yep. Yes. Um, I've uh, never seen Veep, but I have seen the thick of it and in the loop, and yeah. I enjoy both of those. Yeah. So I mean, the the Veep is very much in the in the same vein as as that show is. Alrighty. Um. So so yeah. Have you have you not seen the Death of Solomon? I have not. I don't believe I've heard of it. Excellent. All right. But, yeah, I'm down for that. Cool. I'll save my other one for another time. That sounds good too. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Alrighty. Well, uh, thank you again <laughs> to, to, to the listener and to you. Yes, I'd like to say thank you to you. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> No, th- thank you for picking the lighthouse because uh, I don't know when I when I would have watched it, or I know Jenny was glad that she didn't watch it with me. <laughs> I mean, I can only imagine someone who has no idea what it is just walking in intermittently, <laughs> <laughs> like like any given scene in that movie would just be <laughs> off putting. Absolutely. <laughs> Like, like even before the weird shit happens. Yeah, it's just it's just a, a quiet, strange movie for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, but it's it's good. It's good. It's worth watching. I yeah. would say. Yeah, I would. I would definitely say it's worth watching. It's uh, you know. Again, you know, I, I do think The Witch was a better movie, but but it's. It, you know, I, I always appreciate people who try things. Absolutely. And uh, I, I feel like he was successful in what he was trying, but boy, it is bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All righty. The Death of Stalin next week. Excellent. Looking forward to it. All right. We'll see you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to The View Masters. You can subscribe to the show directly at view.guttertrash.net or at iTunes and leave us a review. Visit view.guttertrash.net for email information and links to Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you next time on The View Masters.